Welcome to the amusing video of the humorous. <laughs> oh, so funny. So funny. Right, we are going to look now at our upper arm bone, or what we could call our proximal arm bone, the humerus. So we are going to zoom in on the top portion, or our superior portion of the humerus. Now this is going to be where we will articulate with the scapula in our shoulder joint, which is the eight ball and socket joint, right? So the head of the humerus is going to be one of those that I can always find as a landmark that will be medial, meaning it's going to be the part that dangles in the socket, right? right. It's going to articulate with the glenoid cavity. Yes. So then we can see to the lateral side of that there is a bump. Okay, this is a kind of large bump called the greater tubercle. The greater tubercle will always be lateral. Now between the two here you can kind of see another bump that's going to stick out forward. This is going to be our lesser tubercle. So this will always be an anterior structure you can find. So anterior will always be towards the front. The head will always be medial. We'll be able to figure out hopefully which side is left and right. Now as we follow the tubercles down towards about the middle of the arm, there's a bump, which is going to be hard to see on the video, but you can check it out in lab. This is the deltoid tuberosity. This is going to be a bump where our deltoid muscle is going to attach. Now if we continue moving down to the distal end of our humerus, there are two bumps. Now if we look at the The medial side of the yes, the medial side of the bottom part of our arm, we're gonna find a bump. Okay, this bump here on the medial side is gonna be called our trochlea. So the trochlea is gonna be on the medial side, which means it's gonna be lined up with the, the head. head of the humerus. So the trochlea is gonna be on our medial side. Now on the other side, on our lateral side, there's another big bump. This is going to be the capitulum. The capitulum is going to be on our lateral side, meaning it will be lined up with our greater tubercle. Now there are also two smaller bumps you can see that are just above the capitulum and the trochlea. These are called epicondyles. Remember, epa is always going to mean above. So the epicondyle on the side with our trochlea is going to be our medial epicondyle. And then on our lateral side, we have the bump, that's our lateral epicondyle. Now the other thing we can see here from the anterior view is that indentation right in the center um, of the bumps. This is the coronoid fossa. This is going to be one of the places where our ulna is going to articulate to make our elbow. Now if we flip the humerus over to the posterior side, there is a much larger indentation. This is also a fossa, and this is the olecranon fossa. <laughs> this is the olecranon fossa, where again, part of the ulna is going to articulate with the elbow. Okay, so let's take a peek at this on Herman. Hello, Herman. Hello. So what we can see here is the head of the humerus is going to be articulating in a ball and socket joint with the scapula, uh, which will be stabilized by our clavicle. So here we're on the posterior side. You can follow it down to the elbow. Now here on the elbow, you can actually see how the ulna and the radius are going to articulate to form the elbow. So we have the olecranon fossa we're looking at right now, which is actually the spot where the olecranon process is going to stick into it. Now that's going to be part of the ulna that we'll look at in a moment. And then on the anterior side, we can also see that indentation fossa there, that's the coronoid fossa that is going to be articulating with the coronoid process again of the ulna. So this is going to allow us to have a hinge socket so that our elbow will straighten and bend without overextending and breaking the elbow. Okay, so I think that is it for our humerus. Haha, <laughs> so yeah, funny. We will come back with the more distal part of the arm.